But next topic, Jose. Yes. Uh, Bloomberg's Jason Schreier has reported that Sony is currently working on a remake for 2013's The Last of Us. Uh, Sony Ben Studio, whose sequel to their wide-selling Days Gone, never received a green light for a sequel. Uh, so they've had one team shifted to work on a Naughty Dog multiplayer title, which is assumably The Last of Us 2's multiplayer component, and another team to create an entirely new spin-off and charted game under direct supervision from Naughty Dog. Um... Ben Studio leadership became disenfranchised with a decision and left the, and left the studio uh, with the studio as a whole fearing being absorbed into Naughty Dog. Leadership later asked to be taken off. Of, um, let me redo that sentence. It came off fucking awful. Uh, leadership later asked to be taken off of Uncharted and are now working on a new game. Uh, the Last of Us remake is now being developed in-house by Naughty Dog with support from uh, Sony, Sony Core's uh, Visual Arts Service Group, otherwise known as uh, VH, VASG. Uh, who originally pitched the idea of a remake after growing tired of being purely uh, a support development studio. So they've kind of like had their hands in like basically every single Sony exclusive that's come out, but they've never like led the charge on their own original game development. Mm -hmm. Um, As we were talking about on the pre-show, I guess before he went live, um, this is a much different story than from what I've written out two weeks ago, because there's just been constant uh, updates, whether it's, We'll, we'll get into the days gone aspect of it after this with, with people talking out their ass and then uh, Jason Schreier elaborating and stuff. So uh, in an interview with mid max, Jason Schreier elaborated on his original story, which I don't know why he hasn't updated the story with putting these in here. Cause it completely changes the context of basically everything in there. Uh, he elaborated that uh, following the release of the last of us part two, naughty dog employees, not necessary for the development of the multiplayer component of the game, uh, still needed a project to work on while new ideas incubate. So while they're planning on going into pre-production, there's a bunch of developers just kind of sitting around. They don't necessarily have anything to work on. And that's why the um, shifting production of the remake in-house was why that that's why that decision was made. They inherently know the ins and outs of the game versus having a, a third party do it. Um, so, yeah, the production of remake fulfills that role for letting them have something to work on and just as the case is with the original last of us um remaster that was on the playstation 4 that i believe came out 2014 um this is helping naughty dog kind of learn the ins and outs of the playstation 5 hardware um kind of for like so they basically use the last of us remaster from 2014 in order to get a proper grip on how they should go about working on Uncharted 4, which is their first PlayStation 4 title. Mm. Um, in addition to visual upgrades only possible from a ground up approach, i.e. the differences between the PlayStation 3 remaster of Shadow of the Colossus versus the PlayStation 4 remake, which looks substantially different. Uh, this new iteration will apparently take advantage of gameplay enhancements and mechanics present in The Last of Us Part 2 to kind of make them a bit more of a cohesive package. Um, Shreya reiterates that the development of this remake is infinitely easier to develop in contrast to crunching on a new game. So in that regard, for the developers at Naughty Dog, this is a much more relaxed experience. Um, and oh, he also okay. states... Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, Go I'll ahead. just say this last line. It's the last one I have anyway. Mm -hmm. um, he also says that this, that this should not be taken as a sign of Sony become risk adverse for smaller titles. And uh, just as my own little notes... Um, I don't think Sony's going to be like risk adverse. Like they're just going to be played like as safe as possible, like a EA or Activision, or whatever. I mean, you can just look at the nar at the narrative of The Last of Us Two, and like at least like it's in the scope of AAA games. I would say that that story was highly controversial and very not risk adverse in the slightest. But uh, go ahead, Corey. So basically, it's like it's going to be a complete. Uh, like, is it a completely different like story, or is it? No, it, it's I, I, literally, I, it's literally just like a PS5 remaster, essentially. It, it, I, th I think the terminology gets mixed around a lot, and, and at least the way that I understand the differences between remaster and remake, a remaster is typically maybe putting some better textures in there, um, upresing the game. But they kind of can't fundamentally mess with the lighting too much unless they go like heavy into it. Um, so, uh, what's what's an analogy I want I want to use? And, and we'll kind of use a shadow of the Colossus as an example. 
you can make a tree better by by propping it up with another wood so that it can it can grow better but if you have if you want to like do radical changes to it you got to uproot the entire thing and maybe just start from scratch so okay so they're making the exact same game it's just to play and look better on new consoles kind of like how demon souls was made yeah and they're 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 going to be adding stuff from the last of us uh part two like some of the stealth mechanics some of the um they're they're still going to be using the same performances they're not going to be making like any story changes or anything like that Mm -hmm. it's it's purely just to um it's it's doing what a remaster fundamentally can't because um i've played shadow i I've played Shadow of the Colossus extensively, and that in that PlayStation Four remake looks so much better than that PlayStation Three remaster. It's it's, and I that's mean, that because sounds, they did it from the ground up. That that's that not pretty cool, though. yeah. Because The Last of Us One was you know and still is fan freaking tastic, and like to be able to play it in you know sixty frames a second at four K, or or if you want to do like you know ray tracing and stuff, it's just going to be even scarier and like mm-hmm. i i think ray tracing is a big one is that that's not necessarily something you can just go back to older games yeah and implement like you have to you have to build stuff with that feature set in mind like i know there's mm-hmm. there's like stuff with uh with auto hdr at least on um on microsoft's end but that's uh that, that's not the same thing as is it, it's not as intensive as ray tracing so right uh blaine i know you have some opposite thoughts i don't know if maybe any of that changed your context for it but if you want to go ahead and give your thoughts um they don't change my general opinion but it does change what i would have said in response to all that i regardless of the discussion of this proving or disproving that Naughty Dog and, by association, Sony are afraid of uh, taking risks. I feel like... I feel like this is still kind of an unnecessary thing to be done. I think the remaster looks fantastic. I I don't know if you really need this at all. Um, It's funny also for me to think about, like, Uh, taking to... Or just just to build off that real quick, because I think I agree with you on this point, that that remaster is still readily available and it looks and it yeah. plays great. It it's yeah, like, and it, like it, 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 there's nothing fundamentally wrong with it. No, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, I just I'm trying to be careful with my words here because for once I actually don't have a lot of like bam like to say about this. Um, yeah, I find it unnecessary still fundamentally, but I don't then th- i don't then think like well this like you said this automatically means they're not going to take risks i think now this means i want to wait and see what happens because now instead of it originally what it seemed like was because because what you um, I just because i want to make sure I, I heard you correctly it was that the section of studio bend that is helping on this potential remake was the same studio that would basically had a hand in almost every Sony exclusive property for the last few years. That would be a VASG and then um, Bend was helping in some capacity as well. Some other okay. Naughty Dog projects. And I think a lot okay. of the I think a lot of the discussion kind of got uh, sidetracked because it was kind of like so intermingled with uh, the Days Gone stuff. And I really wish uh, Schreier would put this uh, not even necessarily new information in that story, but just like to put it in there. Because when people saw like, wow, wow, and we'll get into this in a second when we go to the other story, just like, wow, Days Gone sold a lot and they're not going to green light it. Why are they being risk adverse just because it only got a 70? There's a lot of underlying issues that we'll get into there. No, 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 Um, exactly. It's not Sony necessarily being risk adverse, just like it only got a 70. We're not going to do it. There's other stuff. So I think a lot of that conversation got sidetracked. I guess my main point is I feel like while this doesn't necessarily prove that this company is any more or less risk adverse than originally. I think still fundamentally what a lot of people, like people who treat this as, oh my God, now they don't want to take risks anymore. My brain is kind of more like, I mean, no major AAA publisher wants to take risks anymore. None of them want to take risks because through, through their own fucking around in the AAA sphere, they, they, (laughs) 
<laughs> let me, let me, let me. I, this is so cute. Um, but I, I'm trying to keep get my thoughts in a row. Um, I think Bob Vids actually made a really good point that, um, in regards to the comment made by the idiot that we're going to discuss in a little bit, um, how the industry seems to like to blame outside sources for things it has caused. And one of those things is, if I forget if I remember correctly, and what Bob had said is that as far as like an obsession over like return on investment, obsession over return on investment of these games cost so much to make, so we have to do things like microtransactions and loot boxes and 60 to 70 and all this other shit. Um, and it really, it, it comes down to this where it's like, yeah, no, uh, sorry, I'm going, I'm getting in circles. I'm going to try and get back to the point is that, you know, we can sit here and debate all day like, oh, um, this now means that they're less they're the, oh they don't want to take any risks and it's like well none of these publishers want to take risks they want to make their money back and most of the time that's what they use to justify a lot of other shit so it doesn't surprise me that they wouldn't want to green light a sequel for a game even that it sold well that also had like middling to to uh divisive reviews let's put it that way um and just especially with the climate of the way things are that like they keep making games more and more expensive to make. They respect the workers less and less. Um, they want to crunch more and more. So eventually something's going to have to give. And I don't think that... Sorry, I'm going completely off base here. Here, here um, l- l- let's go ahead and Bring me retrack- back, bring me back, yeah, please. Yeah, let's retrack a little bit. Because we'll, we'll go into the days gone like pretty much as yeah. soon as we're done with this. Uh, specifically in regards to the Last of Us component of this... Um, because I think you're you're trying to go on like the risk adverse stuff for it. Like specifically for Last of Us. I was trying to say, you, you, trying you, to say... You believe I believe you said it was it was uh it's kind of unnecessary because that remaster already exists and it and is already functional. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that that's and absolutely fair. Yeah, it is it's, it's, it's functional, it exists, it's unnecessary and um, it's no indication of them wanting to take less risks. It's no more than any company doesn't want to take risks. That's the point I was trying to make. Yeah, I think I think uh, I think after all of the all the you know the shit hitting the fan with the Last of Us Part Two for a bunch of different reasons, I feel like they're literally doing this to take it easy for a while, and like mm-hmm. it's 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 definitely the easy route, basically. Uh, they don't want to pursue, they don't want to risk, they don't want to pursue any fresh ideas. Uh, they don't want to take a chance right now until, you know, they're able to come out with something that will guarantee them success. Well, a lot of it has to do with a lot of their crunch culture coming to light. And then, um, they're they're just like incubating ideas. Like Naughty Dog's a studio that likes to take its time on stuff. So all those like main production people that aren't necessarily pre-production, um, they, they just need something to do. And this seems like the perfect, um, Fit for them, yeah. Mm-hmm. But but that being said, um, this, this will probably be my last thought on. I guess, um, as much as it can be seen as, um, as unnecessary, given that that remaster already exists, if it's ultimately the better product at the end of the day, I'm going to be happy about it. I'm gonna, probably going to play it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I but that- as as far as new game goes, I don't I don't expect to see a new game from Naughty Dog for probably close to the end of the decade. Yeah, honestly, yeah. it's gonna be a quick minute. Mm-hmm. And um, um, yeah, I mean, damn, sorry, I had like one other thing to add, and my brain's doing that thing again. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, I mean, until I guess until we find out, you know, because we really we never found out the full full story of Schreier's investigation. We just know what his investigation kind of. He he told us what he had heard from people, and he put it out what needed to be put out. Naughty Dog did their response. Game came out. And then, you know, it all just kind of went quiet as these these stories often do and mm-hmm. the spotlight's not on the game that everybody likes anymore. I, I was um, thinking about this the other day, just like in regards to other things, the ultimate PR strategy anybody or any group organization can do is to literally just shut their fucking mouth. Absolutely. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you keep the conversation going, at least it's out there, but just know like that's the ultimate thing that people can use to just shut down discussion. But on, yeah, but on um, Blaine's note, it, it, it Whoops. eventually it all fizzled out. You know, yeah. people got people got tired. People moved on as they always do. 
there's going to be a bigger fish to fry. Like, how, how relieved do you think um, Sony slash Naughty Dog was the second everyone like shifted over to talking about um, Cyberpunk? At, like, oh, at least they rounded the crosshair oh, yeah. for the bit. Yeah, exactly. And Cyberpunk was just an absolute shit show. Neil Druckmann put front. down his phone, wiped the sweat from his brow, and went, oh, for once it ain't me. <laughs> right? <laughs> Suck my dick, Neil, from the back. Yeah. 